What's going on everyone? My name is Jasmine. On today's episode of The Slain Project, we're going to be talking about the 2004 murder of 19-year-old Casey Pipeson. And although charges have been filed in her case, her killer has never stood trial. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And if you want to see more videos on missing and murdered Indigenous people, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Now let's get right into it. Casey Jo Pipestem was born on March 8, 1984, to parents Donna Underwood and Anthony Pipestem. She was a proud member of the Seminole tribe in Oklahoma, and her family was from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Casey's parents would eventually split up, and it is stated that she was raised by her grandmother, who taught her their traditional ways. She attended church and participated in tribal ceremonies when she was a young girl. Casey also enjoyed playing basketball and her family nicknamed her Bones because she was so skinny. When Casey was about 10 years old, her life shattered. Her grandmother died at age 75. Their relationship was very close and Casey took this very hard. Casey was sent to live with other relatives and eventually moved with her mom Donna in Oklahoma City. Donna had been in an extremely abusive relationship before she met and married her new husband named Richard Gayton. Life was good for a while and Casey bonded with and accepted Richard as her dad. Casey met new friends in Oklahoma City and was well liked. Her friends called her Care Bear because she was such a nice and caring person. But unfortunately, when Casey was about 13, her stepdad Richard was murdered. He got into a fight with someone and his throat was slashed. Casey had suffered immense loss by the time she was 13 and it had taken a toll on her. She began using drugs and found herself addicted and homeless by the time she was 16. Her uncle, Ted Underwood, said that he had taken Casey in when she was 16 to help get her back on track. She moved back to the reservation to stay with him and his family. He got her back in school, and Casey was even participating in family and tribal traditions again. But Casey did not fit into school, and she went back to live with her mom in Oklahoma City by the time she was 18. But by the time she got back, many of her friends had moved on and she soon met a man named Calvin Scott. Calvin was 25 years old and he was not a nice man. He began to exploit Casey and put her on the streets. He had several other girls he exploited and he would make them work until they made at least $500 a night. By the year 2004, Calvin had Casey working out of truck stops. Truck stops are basically small communities that come together at night and dismantle in the morning. There is a high demand for sex workers at these truck stops. Many men are on the road for long periods of time and away from their families. And even though a lot of truckers are honest, good working people, there are many that are not. And this tends to give all the others a bad reputation. Casey would use a CB radio to find customers throughout the truck stop. When a customer was found, she would go up and knock on the window. Any situation as a sex worker is dangerous, but getting into the sleeper cab of a semi truck is even more so. If the trucker wants to do harm to you, there is no place to go. You are trapped in a small confined space and the trucks are soundproof so nobody could hear you if you screamed. The date is not exactly clear, but approximately on January 30th, 2004, Casey was seen for the last time at a truck stop in Oklahoma City that was along I-35. That night she met a monster named John Robert Williams and his girlfriend Rachel Cumberland. John Robert Williams is also known as the Big Rig Killer or the I-40 killer. Some sources say that Casey was lured into the truck by Rachel, but I think that probably means that Casey let her guard down because she saw a female in the truck. These two individuals would kidnap Casey from the truck stop. She was raped, 
beaten, and strangled before her body was dumped 200 miles away from Oklahoma City in Grapevine, Texas. Grapevine is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and is a major hub in the state that truckers travel through. Casey was thrown off a 37-foot bridge and was found on Saturday, January 31, 2004 at about 6 p.m. A man and his daughter were out for a walk along Big Bear Creek. This is a recreational area and sunset for Grapevine, Texas that day is recorded at 5.59 p.m. So the father and daughter were more than likely just finishing up their time outdoors when they discovered her body. Casey was found nude. There was no purse, jewelry, or any ID nearby. But Casey did have four tattoos that investigators would use to help identify her and her killer. The tattoos were of her nickname Bones, Sea Bear that stood for her nickname of Care Bear, a tattoo that said Little Bit on her shoulder, and the last one on her arm that said Seminole. On Monday, February 2nd, 2004, a detective named Larry Hallmark would travel to Oklahoma City to meet with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, the BIA, and officials from the Seminole Nation. The tattoo Casey had of the word Seminole sent the detective in the right direction. Casey's family was located within a week and they identified her by the tattoo she had. One of Casey's sisters would go on to say that she last spoke to Casey a few days before she was found murdered. Casey had promised her sister that she would come home, but she never got that chance. Although Casey was identified rather quickly, her killer was still unknown to investigators. They had suspected she was murdered by a trucker, but these types of killers are usually hard to find. They live a transient lifestyle and their victims are often dumped in places where they have no connections. These killers travel around so quickly and can be states away from where the victim was picked up in less than a day. With no luck identifying Casey's killer, her case was featured on America's Most Wanted, which was hosted by John Walsh and the show was very popular during its day. The episode aired on June 4th, 2005. Over 80 tips came in and one was very promising. A cousin of John Robert Williams called the tip line and said that he had bragged about killing a woman and the story was very similar to Casey's. Tracking John down was not hard. He was serving time in prison for the murder of a woman named Nikki Hill. John and his girlfriend, Rachel, met her at a casino in Mississippi and shot and killed her in August of 2004. John Robert Williams would be sentenced to life in prison for Nikki's kidnapping and murder. Rachel would receive a 20-year sentence for manslaughter. When investigators questioned the pair about Casey's murder, John was very talkative, Rachel not so much. When he was shown pictures of Casey, he did not recognize her. Detective Hallmark showed him a picture of Casey dressed how she would look when she was working. He immediately recognized her and said that's little bit. He was referring to the tattoo on her shoulder. John was suspected of at least 14 murders and he admitted to killing Casey and many others. Investigators were weary of his confessions because he was so talkative, but he recalled many tattoos on the victims and this made him more credible. When he was asked why he committed the murders, he said it was like hunting, except the animals come to you. He said once they tapped on the window, they were dead because once they got in, they were never going home. On a crime series called The Killing Season, John Robert Williams said that he had killed 30 plus people that were easy prey for him. He said he broke rule number one and that is why he is sitting in prison. That rule was to never kill anyone from or around your area. A very disturbing comment from him is that he knew of at least seven other serial killers that were working as truck drivers. He said five were males and two were female. 
John Robert Williams is also suspected of killing at least two other Native victims. They were Janice Bruno in 2002 and Vicki Helen Anderson in 2003. Many of his victims were Caucasian, but he seemed to favor women with dark hair. Casey's horrific murder would set off a chain of investigative measures. Terry Turner with the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation would investigate seven murders across four different states that included Casey and find that all were sex workers who operated out of truck stops. Then in 2007, the FBI began investigating nationwide truck stop and highway murders. On April 6, 2009, the FBI released its report on their Highway Serial Killings Initiative. It identified around 500 victims and about 200 suspects. The victims or suspect names were not released, but the map of all the body locations lit the country up. Casey's family would have to wait for almost a decade for John Robert Williams to be charged with her murder but it was ultimately decided that he would not stand trial in Tarrant County, Texas unless he was released from the Mississippi prison where he was being held. He was serving a life sentence for murdering Nikki Hill, and life sentences are usually 25 years unless it is specified as a natural life sentence or life without parole. Rachel Cumberland only served eight years out of the 20 she received for this crime and she was released in 2013. In 2005, Casey's pimp Calvin Scott was prosecuted and sentenced to 10 years in prison for sex trafficking many young women and girls. His youngest victim was only 13 years old. Casey's uncle said that she was a good person who was swallowed up by drugs and prostitution. About 400 people showed up to her funeral to pay their final respects. Casey was buried at the Underwood Family Cemetery that is located behind her uncle's house. She is gone, but not forgotten. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you knew Casey, please share any memories of her and I will see you in my next video.